guys, I'm Kaylin. Welcome back to Fable Hill Farm. We are just days away from kicking off our 2024 kidding season, and I am so excited to cuddle some baby goats. I have been seeing all of my breeder friends around the country posting pictures and videos of their babies that they've already had born, and I have been so envious. There is nothing in the world like baby goats, and I just, I just can't wait. I thought it would be really fun to do this video to kind of start the 2024 kidding series to look at not only what does we have and who they're bred to, but look at the possible color combinations that we're going to be seeing in our kid crop this year. I personally have always had an interest in genetics. When I was a kid, I actually used to breed mice to study their genetics, which is a little weird. And let me say my parents, did not like it very much, but alas, here we are. Now, as an adult, a dairy goat breeder, a crazy goat lady, proud to be one, uh, diving into Nigerian dwarf color genetics with all of you. So let's get started. First and foremost, color doesn't matter. I don't breed for a flashy coat or eye color. I don't select animals to keep in my own breeding program based off any of those things. I am personally breeding to produce animals who are improved as far as their type and their milk production. None of those things like color, eye color, whether an animal is pulled, have any impact on whether or not that animal can produce milk or win in the show ring. However, color is fun. Nigerian dwarfs come in a multitude of colors, patterns, different eye colors, and all of that is just part of the fun of owning and breeding Nigerians. I don't think there's anything wrong with enjoying the color aspect of the breed, and as a show breeder, it's often necessary to find pet homes for a lot of your animals, particularly weathers, and the fact of the matter is flash sells. So as long as it meets my herd goals, I want the flash. Every goat carries two different color patterns that they get from their sire and their dam, one from each. So there's a 50% chance with every offspring, the parent is passing down one or the other as far as what color gene. This is just an example to show you that if you have a black goat and a gold goat carrying black, you can get either black or gold offspring depending on which color gene that particular parent gave them. There are a lot of nuances to color genetics, but just an overview here for all of you. Dominant genes need only one copy in order for that gene to be visible. Recessive genes, however, require two copies, so one from each parent. And then you have modifiers like chocolate and silver, which are actually in addition to the base coat color. First up, we have Nurse and Beanie. Nurse is a gold buck carrying black with brown eyes. His dam was chocolate. That's how I know that he carries the black gene. Beanie is a chocolate buckskin with moon spots. She is also carrying black. These kids have a 25% chance of being black, a 50% chance of being gold, and a 25% chance of being buckskin. Now that chocolate modifier gene makes things a little weird, but I'm not going to get into it in too much detail. Uh, but just know there's a lot, lot of variety here potentially for different shades of chocolate and gold. And then 50% chance of moon spots, 100% brown eye. Whiskey and Ely. Whiskey is a combo, so he has actually two visible color patterns. He is both Swiss and Buckskin. And then Ely here is Buckskin and Coup Claire. So two combo animals. Ely has moon spots and Whiskey is pulled, meaning he's naturally hornless. So 75% chance that these kids are going to be some combination of either Swiss Buckskin, Swiss Coup Claire, Buckskin Coup Claire. Or they could just be buckskin if both Ely and Whiskey throw a buckskin gene. 50% chance again that these kids will have moon spots and then a 50% chance that they're going to be pulled. They are all going to have brown eyes. 
Next up is Whiskey and Bunny. Again, Whiskey is a Swiss buckskin combo that's pulled. Bunny is also a combo. She is a buckskin chamoise combo. So 75% chance that we're going to see a combination kid with either Swiss buckskin, Swiss chamoise, chamoise buckskin, or just like with Elian Whiskey, if both Bunny and Whiskey throw a buckskin gene, you're going to see a plain buckskin kid. All the kids are going to have brown eyes and 50% chance each kid is going to be pulled. Now we have Cinnamon and Sidar. Cinnamon is a buckskin carrying black and he has blue eyes. Sidar is a chamoise carrying black with brown eyes. Now there is a 25% chance we're going to see a buckskin chamoise combo and then 25% chance on the other colors, buckskin, chamoise, and black. We've got a 50-50 chance of seeing either brown or blue eyes here. Next up is Sidar's daughter, Sadai, also bred to cinnamon. Again, buckskin with blue eyes carrying black. Sadai is a combo as well. She has a chamoise buckskin combo going on with brown eyes. So we've got a 25% chance of seeing a buckskin chamoise combo. Then there's a 50% chance of the kids being buckskin and a 25% chance of them being chamoise with a 50-50 chance that they're going to have brown or blue eyes. Now this one gets a little complex here because this doe, Hallie, is bred to two different bucks. So first up, she's bred to cinnamon, again, buckskin, carrying black with blue eyes. Then she's also bred to nurse, who is gold, carrying black with brown eyes. Hallie herself is black, meaning she can only throw a black gene because you have to have two copies. It's a recessive gene, and she's got brown eyes. Kids from Cinnamon have a 75% chance of being black and a 25% chance of being buckskin. Eye color, of course, is going to be 50-50 here, brown or blue eyes. And then the kids sired by nurse have a 50% chance of being gold or a 50% chance of being black. They could only have brown eyes. And then the star there notates that if the kids are gold or if they are buckskin, that those traits would be indicative of who their sire is at birth. But whenever you breed a doe to more than one buck or you have, say, a doe breakout or a bucks breakout, kids should be DNA verified because it's really important to maintain the integrity of the Nigerian Dwarf Herd Book. So regardless of whatever color the kids are, if they are registered, they will be DNA verified to figure out who exactly their sire is. Next up, we have Hallie's Dam Haggis, who is also bred to cinnamon. Cinnamon again, buckskin with black and blue eyes. And then Haggis, just like Hallie, is a black doe carrying two copies of black with brown eyes. So we've got a 75% chance of black kids, 25% chance of buckskin, and then a 50-50 chance on whether those kids are going to have brown or blue eyes. Now we have Nurse and Wendy. Nurse again is gold carrying black with brown eyes. Wendy is a Swiss doe carrying black. She also has brown eyes. These kids have a 25% chance of being black, a 50% chance of being gold, and a 25% chance of being Swiss. They will definitely have brown eyes. Here's another fun one, uh, Claire here, best junior doe in show, who actually beat out a national champion Sable kid, who the next month after Claire won best in show against her, went on to become a two-time national junior champion, which is just pretty cool. Uh, Claire was bred to two bucks, Templeton and Nurse. So Templeton is a black buck. He carries two black jeans, of course. Everybody here is going to have brown eyes, so I won't mention eye color again. Uh, Nurse is gold carrying black, and Claire is chocolate. So while she is technically black, she has that chocolate modifier, which means that even though she can only throw a black gene, she can also throw a chocolate modifier gene to each kid potentially. So any kids sired by Templeton are either going to be black or chocolate. Any kids sired by nurse could be gold, chocolate gold, black, or chocolate. So if any of the kids are gold or chocolate gold, again, you would know at birth that they were sired by nurse. However, of course, those kids will, as I said, all be DNA typed.
Now we're going to move on to the breedings that are not confirmed. I say these breedings are subject to change because if any of these does are not bred and I will hopefully be ultrasounding them this weekend, which is going to be the first weekend in February, if they are unconfirmed or not pregnant, then they will not be bred again until the fall. So at that point, those breedings could be subject to change depending on whether or not they get bred to the same or a different buck. First up, we have Sprout and Mooney. They are both buckskin carrying black with brown eyes. So 50% chance kids are black and 50% chance they're buckskin with 100% of those kids having brown eyes. This is our last dual buck breeding, Templeton and Sprout were both bred to Secret. Templeton is a black buck, so carrying just black genes. Sprout is buckskin carrying black, and then Secret is black. So lots of black going on here. 100% of the kids from Templeton and Secret would be black, and then 50% chance those kids are gonna be buckskin or black from Sprout. And again, because Templeton and Secret are both black, the only way that you could get a buckskin kid if, is if Sprout was the sire. Now we have Templeton and Bambi. Bambi is Beanie, our first doe do's litter mate sister. She is a chocolate buckskin carrying black because Beanie and Bambi's dam is chocolate. So again, that means with that chocolate modifier gene that any kid that she has potentially could inherit that chocolate gene as well. So because Templeton is black and uh, Bambi is carrying a black gene, those kids have a 50% chance of being black or chocolate and a 50% chance of being either buckskin or chocolate buckskin because she is moon spotted 50% chance of each of those kids inheriting moon spots as well. Here is Sprout and BB. Now they both are carrying a black jean. Sprout is a buckskin. BB is a chamoise. So 25% chance of having black or buckskin kids. 25% chance chamoise. 25% of that kid being a combo of both buckskin and chamoise. 100% chance of brown eyes. This one here is kind of interesting because we don't know what secondary color gene that cider this gold doe is carrying. She could be carrying a second copy of the gold gene or she could be carrying black. So depending on what color she's carrying will determine the color possibilities on the kids. If she has two copies of gold gene because Templeton is black and black is recessive, then those kids could only be 100% gold. But if she's carrying a black gene, then the kids could be 50-50 black or gold. Here we have Templeton and Nisu. Templeton, of course, being black. Nisu is a Swiss doe, and she is carrying a black gene because her sire was chocolate. So 50% chance that those kids are either going to be black or Swiss. Last but most certainly not least, this is Envy, our AI kid that was born last year. Really, really exciting, promising young doe. She is black. Templeton is black, so we are only going to get black kids out of this breeding. 